Colonel Susie Scott, Deputy Commanding Officer here at Madigan Army Medical Center. Ever since I was a kid, I've been fascinated with how things work. I'm always curious about what's going on under the lid. Being a colonel here at Madigan Army Medical Center affords me the opportunity to see what's going on behind the scenes. You would be amazed at how fascinating it is. Today, I'm exploring research and innovation. I hear there's something cool going on in here. You wanna come see how Madigan works? This is one of the ways Madigan cuts the proverbial edge. This is part of the Anderson Simulation Center, an impressively outfitted facility that trains not only the Army's medical professionals, but special forces, rangers, Army police, even Homeland Security coming here for training. It's about as close as you can get to the real thing without actually spilling blood. Hi, Phil. Hey, ma'am, how are you? Great. <laughs> this is Thomas Phillips, or Phil. He is our simulation expert here at the Anderson Simulation Center. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing here. So um, right now I'm just calibrating the, um, the biomedics ultrasound task trainer. Okay. So I have to make sure everything is lined up right before the learners get to come in so it functions properly. Awesome. What are the learners seeing here? So what are the, the learners are going to see is there's going to be um, uh, augmented reality. There's going to be an overlay that they can interact with. Uh, would you like to take a look? Yeah. Okay. 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 <gasps> oh, this is cool. <laughs> Check it out. All right. Is it good? Good yeah. image? I can okay. see uh, the Titan. I can see the sternum with the heart beating underneath it and mm -hmm. the lungs. So now with this mannequin, will it breathe too? Um, it's simulated, so there isn't any hardware inside of him. It's mostly software driven, so okay. he doesn't have the, um, the pneumatics where things are breathing and he has a pulse, but you get to hear it through the goggles. Yeah. Uh, yeah you get to hear the heartbeat hear the heart and things thumping, and then also when you're using the ultrasound, you get to see the heart moving, lungs moving, and things like that. Okay, cool. Okay, so the, um, the, the next one I think is Isolate Heart. Yeah. And Isolate Heart is kind of tricky, but uh, click on Isolate Heart. Okay, now there should be a heart floating in front of you, yes? Yes. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to reach out and you're going to pinch and then pull it to your ear. Grab it and pull it. It should get bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so now you um, walk in and you kind of lean over the biomedics, but you can stick your head inside the heart. Just, just get all the way in there, all lean over him, and you should be able to look inside the uh, heart. <gasps> No way. <laughs> oh, wow. The Sim Center and the entire simulation program are about providing a path to research, innovate, and find the best ways to treat injury and illness, to include, of course, those that occur on the battlefield. They have mannequins that are so real, some people find them kind of creepy. New models have got full anatomy and are very realistic. Skin, fat, organs, the works. Working on it offers a pretty realistic feel. In addition to the battles and surgeries that can be simulated in the trauma and operating rooms of the center itself, the simulation team puts on an annual capstone field exercise to send its graduating resident doctors off with a taste of what combat medicine is all about. Thanks, Bill. You're very welcome, man. The Sim Center is just one place where you can see Madigan's investment in research and innovation. We also host a research day that's sponsored by the Department of Clinical Investigation. Let's see what they're up to. Madigan Research Day is dedicated to sharing the advances residents and staff have made in their research endeavors throughout the year, and they are many and varied. This whole group of people, the Department of Clinical Investigation, supports a lot of research at Madigan. So does the medical library. The librarian helps residents get a good view of what research has already been done on their proposed topic. That informs and focuses their own projects. But wait, there's more. One area that's been using advanced technology for a while now is the urology service. But they aren't alone. Robotics are being used in procedures big and small in many of our surgical services to include orthopedics and general surgery. In the Center for Nursing Science and Clinical Inquiry, there's even more research going on. Much of it involves health promotion. As you saw during research day, Dr. Mary McCarthy is looking at vitamin D. This is Dr. Mary McCarthy, nurse scientist, and Ms. Barb Seckley, research nurse. Yes, ma'am. This device here that we're looking at is part of an efficacy study to see if it produces vitamin D in the skin. 
and that is part of the FDA approval process for all new devices. The question we are trying to answer here is, will UVB light exposure in this booth boost vitamin D in the blood to healthy levels, and will that increase last through a deployment or a gloomy northwest winter? From bones to heart health to mood and immunity, vitamin D impacts overall health and well-being in profound ways. So we want to make sure our Madigan beneficiary population has healthy levels of it. This is just one of the many studies we perform to promote overall health and well-being. This is all cool, but how does an actual patient see the effects? Let's take a closer look. Even where Madigan is not directly involved in the research process itself for a procedure or treatment, it is still on the cutting edge of innovation. This can be seen with a new procedure now being performed in the refractive eye clinic. Madigan is the second Army and third Department of Defense site to employ this treatment for keratoconus, a condition that weakens the cornea, allowing its shape to distort and cause blurry and impaired vision. Prior to the Food and Drug Administration approving the use of corneal cross-linking, corneal replacement was the only remedy for a condition that can cause blindness and affects teens and young adults most often. This is Colonel Mark Torres, a corneal specialist here at Madigan Army Medical Center. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, thanks for meeting with me. A lot of the patients that you see here are young and staring down the possibility of losing their sight. And until this procedure, you didn't have a lot of options for them, is that correct? That's correct. This really is a great leap forward for our young patients. And it's as simple as vitamin B and some ultraviolet light. Sometimes the most uh, significant advances in, in medicine are, are simpler than people would, would think. Um, but with the right recipe and the right technology, we can uh, try to help our patients and then save some eyesight. That's wonderful. It is. Our young patients have the same life and career aspirations that we do. Uh, for example, Sean uh, is going to college and majoring in aerospace engineering. And Jason, even though he's young, is already an accomplished artist. Both of these career and life pursuits require good vision. And now we have the tools to help them focus on their future. This is the very thinnest of slices of the research and innovation that's happening all the time here at Madigan. Thanks for joining me. Next time I'll show you how some other part of Madigan works.